What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Invest with T. Claus. My name is Tevi, and this channel is dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on crypto, Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information and stay for the perspective. So we haven't spoken in a while, which is just about a month now, as I was on vacation, and it was a well-needed vacation. A lot has happened in the stock market while I was away, and it has been interesting to plug back in and get caught up, to say the least. Historically, the month of August tends to trend downward, especially when the first half of the year yields such positive returns. Despite trending lower, the SP500 is still up 16.10%, essentially just giving back nearly 4% from its peak at the close of July. Comparatively, Virgin Galactic lost 33.82%. This past month alone right and we made a new all-time low to boot so in today's video let's talk through what is going on with virgin galactic then go over analyst ratings and price predictions and i'll close with where i stand as far as buying holding or selling it's not quite as straightforward as you may think so stick around to see what i mean as always this isn't to be taken as financial advice i'm not a financial advisor this is my personal approach to investing and a thought process behind it i'd recommend watching all the way through so that you don't miss out on any pertinent information i'll be sharing drop this video a like if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button those are two easy ways to show your support to the channel and help it grow if you appreciate the content. All right, let's get into it. So going back to the last earning call on August 1st, Virgin Galactic had reiterated its commitment to a monthly flight cadence, right? This is after they had successfully completed Galactic 1 with the Italian Air Force. They have since completed Galactic 2, making history in space travel in quite a few ways. You can watch my last video here for a rundown of the significance of that flight. Now fast forward to this Friday on September 8th and Virgin Galactic once again completed a successful flight bringing three lucky paying customers to the edge of space with Galactic 3. Now these were early paying customers with an estimated ticket cost of $250,000, one from the United States, the other from South Africa and a last passenger from the United Kingdom. It's important to note that not only has Virgin Galactic maintained their monthly flight cadence for the first three commercial flights, they also expect to have Galactic 4 take place in early October per the press release. This is all positive news, but yet the stock keeps crashing lower. Just this week, we have achieved a new all-time low of $2.22 and a weekly loss of 9.13%. The issue we keep running into here is the consistent buy the rumor, sell the news by investors. Add to that the recent stock dilution as Virgin Galactic issued more stock to raise capital and the wider than expected cash burn reported during the last earning call. So that was again $134 million versus the $111 million reported. With all that, you can see why more and more investors are losing patience and confidence, right? So let's talk about those numbers. At the end of Q2 2023, Virgin Galactic is sitting on a cash reserve of $980 million. They expect to bring in revenue of $1 million in Q3 and Q4. Cash burn is expected to be at most at $130 million in Q3 and Q4. Assuming nothing changes in the best case scenario, right? They only have enough cash to make it to the end of Q1 2025. That is not enough. Now, I had warned about this previously and told you that Virgin Galactic would need to do another cash raise to bridge the gap between now and when their Delta class comes into service in late 2025. They would need, by my estimation, at least one more billion. The problem is, with such a low stock price, and this is an interesting fact, as it stands, they have more cash than what the company is worth on their balance sheet. The company is worth $840 million, and they have $980 million on their balance sheet. Well, raising more capital through more dilution would be counterproductive at this point. Taking on debt when interest rates are this high isn't a great option either. And convertible notes are not that appealing to institutional investors unless there's fairly high confidence that the stock price will be higher than the terms of the deal once the debt reaches maturity. So there's definitely a strong bear case here to be made. That said, this isn't unexpected news to me, but many are just now waking up to this fact and judging by the reaction, and the plunging stock price, this is likely no longer where they want to allocate or are simply rebalancing to reduce exposure, essentially too risky of an investment at the moment and therefore adjustments have to be made. As I look at analyst ratings and future price predictions, those were revised lower. We have an overall consensus rating of a moderate sell made up of six ratings, that's three hold ratings and three sell ratings. 
and we still are chasing that elusive buy rating. The median price target is at $3.50, which represents a 52.84% upside from current levels. The high end of the price range is currently at $4.75, and the low end is at $3. Essentially, the median price target and top end of the range were revised lower while keeping the low end unchanged from a month ago. The upward trend I was watching is also broken given that we have failed to make a higher high and instead achieved a new lower low, okay? So these are all the facts. The question now is, what do they mean to me? How have I approached the stock in light of all this? And what am I going to do moving forward? Earlier in the video, I told you that August is historically a challenging month, right? Knowing that I would be outside of the country for a month with potentially no access to my portfolio, I set a stop loss before going on vacation. Well, this was intended as a precaution, though I didn't expect it would actually be needed. For full transparency, my stop loss was set at $2.85, which frankly, I assumed was unlikely to occur short of something pretty significant happening, right? So long story short, two thirds of my position was sold off while I was on vacation. Imagine my surprise. The good news is we are now sitting quite a bit lower and I can buy back in at a more reasonable price. It's also important to note that the capital loss can have a positive impact for deductions on my taxes come year end. Plus, as long as we stay at these levels, or even trend a bit lower, any shares purchased here goes to further reduce my cost basis. Now, there are some watch outs and risks to be aware of. Number one, I can't take advantage of that capital loss unless I wait a full month before buying back in or it cancels out the credit essentially. And so really I still have a little bit of ways to go before I can do that. Also looking at the charts, the stock is currently way oversold and could very well rebound before settling down, but that would essentially, if it happens in the next week or so, block me out of that window of opportunity where I can still buy back in without forfeiting the benefits of taking on that capital loss. The bottom line for me is this. My confidence in Virgin Galactic viability as a business that will succeed has not changed. Their execution leading up to commercial flight and now maintaining the monthly cadence has been flawless. No one can take that away from them. Also, despite the low stock price, the current trading range does offer the opportunity for those brave enough to potentially double their investment if they're buying in at these levels, remember that the range top is $4.75 and we were there not that long ago, right? The challenges Virgin Galactic is facing remains the same and are already accounted for in my approach. I fully expect that as interest rate gets cut next year and Virgin Galactic continues to deliver on their flight cadence, which is the best showcase of their ability to usher in space tourism in a safe and repeatable way. Well, if that continues to happen, investors' confidence will return. Fun fact for you, nearly 60% of Virgin Galactic shares are held by insiders and institutions, with the vast majority going to institutional investors. It's currently a 20-40 split. And really, the last thing I will say is this. The demand for the service is here. I mean, look at their backlog, right? Virgin Galactic simply needs to continue to show that they can execute. There is a significant amount of risk. Absolutely, yes. But I still feel confident that the upside reward far outweighs the downside risk. And for that reason, I intend to build back my position. But on that note, that is it for me today. If you found value in my content, click the like button and share with others who you think could also benefit from it. For my newcomers, subscribe, it's free. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you too can stay in the know. I'll be back on Sunday for my weekly video. Till then, you can keep up with me here on Twitter for crypto and NFT related news. Thank you for watching, stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.